We enter the zone just over a week and a half away from Selection Sunday when the NCAA tournament field will be revealed. And last night felt like a tournament night in Champaign, Illinois, a top 15 tilt between third-ranked Purdue on the road, one victory away from an outright Big Ten title for the second consecutive year against an Illinois team that was booked as the favorites at home, ranked 12th in the country for the opening half. Illinois looked like the right side, up by six at the break, 40 to 34. But what is the mark of a champion? What is the mark of a team, Donnie, that will have March to find its season once again? Purdue showed that last night. A huge second half, 43-31 the difference. The Boilermakers outscore Illinois by 12. They win the basketball game outright as an underdog for just the second time this season, 77 71 a two and a half point underdog the boilers win outright purdue wins an outright big 10 title in the regular season for a second straight season yeah the FanDuel sportsbook opened up purdue as a one and a half point favorite and by game time as you pointed out we're a two and a half point underdog now i like the illinois the uh, fighting line i earlier in the day yesterday i said you know what i'll take that minus one and a half i think this is a showcase game for illinois at home they should put up or shut up in this game but if you're going to be the purdue boilermakers and this is where you start to gain that momentum and steam heading into march madness because you're not playing at home they're not comfortable environments yeah. they're new opponents here they're quality opponents and you got to win six straight games which hasn't worked out in their favor over the past couple of years here with quality quality teams but if you are Purdue and you say you know what I'm going to face an Illinois team that's really good right now and shoot close to 50 percent as a team from the floor on the road you'll take that but how about three point range here 56 yep. percent you know what that means nine of 16 from the floor Everybody collapses down on Zach Eady. If you are making your open shots, it can be an absolutely deadly offense. And also, it wasn't as if like, hey, the game plan here for the for the uh, Fighting Illini is going to be, you know what? Let's just take away Zach Eady. You know you can't do that. He played 36 minutes, shot 23 times, and ended up with 28 points here. That was a great performance overall for Purdue. And also keep in mind, this wasn't one like, hey, yeah. Purdue was on it right away, Ben. They had to lead all the way through and held on to the end. No, like they were down at the break, had to charge in the second half. Make those clutch basketball shots here. It's one of those games where you look back to and say, you know what? On those top lines that we're looking at betting, they see who's going to win March Madden this year. Maybe Purdue gets yeah. a bump from games like this because it makes them more trustable down the stretch. And one of the things, the RS, that I think the Boilermakers over the past two years have struggled with when they have played from behind because the regular season records have been so great, they haven't been in many areas where they have trailed, is they get a little bit hesitant at the guard spot. Can you trust a Braden Smith? Can you trust a Fletcher Lawyer? Are they too reliant on getting the ball inside to Zach Eady? Not last night. 28 points for Eady. 23 field goal attempts. He made 13 only four free throw attempts for the big man, for the Boilermakers. That is not often what we see, an uncommon occurrence to only go to the free throw line four times. A great defensive game plan from Brad Underwood and Illinois. But Braden Smith is the difference this year. Three of four from deep, the point guard for the Boilers that adds it up across each and every stat category each and every single night in Big Ten play in a dagger three with just under 19 seconds remaining in regulation that gave them the six-point margin that Purdue won by. And I will say this for Illinois, not a great defensive team. They had gone over in nine straight games, 13 of their last 14. Last night's total stays under 164 and a half, finishes with just 77, 71. That's 148 total points. So Purdue wins an outright Big Ten regular season championship for a second consecutive year, plus 160 to accomplish that before this season got underway. And you mentioned DRS, more trustworthy when you get to the big dance in those key moments. Can you come from behind when things aren't working your way in the first 20 minutes? How would that be reflected in the national championship odds? Take 30 cents or 50 cents off the number, excuse me. Purdue went from plus 750 to 7 to 1, tied for the second best price behind UConn with Houston. And rightfully so. They should be there at this point. And they're perfect matches here for March Madness because if you could tell me right now, now granted, we're not going to get 50% shooting from the three-point line in every game in March Madness. That's just not going to happen. But they can be right. said, you know what? 
we're not a one-trick pony here. Like, yes, of course we're going to le- lean on Zach Eadie. He's the best player in college basketball. We want the ball in his hands as much as possible. But let's just say he does have an off-night shooting, which, again, last night, he wasn't all that efficient, and you still won against a top-15 program on the road. These are the games that you're going to lean on here. And it's also a team through trials and tribulations. Here's what you don't want to see. They get into that round of 32. They're down eight at the break. Yep. Oh, no, woe is me at this point here, yeah. which you can relate to last night where they were down six points at the break. Ah, you know what? We can win this thing again, and don't worry about it. It's not going to affect our seed line here. They had a great second half in a tough environment that was jumping in Champaign yesterday, and yep. they won that basketball game. We're not saying Purdue is a must bet here to win the national championship, but you can't look at it saying, like, well, they lost early last year, and two years ago they did the same thing. Nonsense at this point. It's a better basketball team that should be learning from the mistakes and yesterday was a big win down at the break winning on the road against the top 15 program i like to see that out of purdue we can highlight everything purdue has done this year now 11 quad one victories that's the most in the country 17 quad one and two wins again the most in college basketball seven wins against teams ranked in the top 25 tied for the most around the country so on and so forth everybody knows Purdue's season will be defined by its run in the NCAA tournament, not only to change the narrative from a season ago, but for a Boilermakers program that is rich in history, but has failed to reach a Final Four since 1980. In my estimation, this team is different. Now we go to the S. EC, a huge game last night for the top of the charts in that regular season title race in the Southeastern Conference. Alabama, a two and a half point underdog on the road in the Gaines, uh, in Gainesville against Florida. And that line proved to be correct. Again, the home unranked favorite against a ranked road opponent. It's been a strong trend all year since the calendar turned into February. Now here in March, 105-97, the victory for the Gators. A total of 176 and a half still finds its way over. Alabama has dropped two in a row. They have not covered in their last four games as an underdog. Meanwhile, Florida in their last six games in SEC play as a single-digit favorite. They have covered in five of six. Yeah, by the way, there were some crazy stat lines in this game. You take a look at Walter Clayton yeah. Jr., who you thought he'd be Joel Embiid last night. 15 of 16 from the floor? No. 15 of 16 from the free throw line. Take a look at the Florida Gators in that game. They shot 46 free throws and made 40 of those in that victory, getting wow. over 100 points here. You take a look, and it's like, okay, live by the three, die by the three. We get it, Alabama, but even if you die by the three, you can still play some good defense out there. They shot 21% from three-point range, 44% as a team, and even even though they shot a great amount of free throws as well, 25, which is usually pretty solid for a college basketball yeah. game, and made 20 of those and shot 80% and still didn't win. I don't know how many people are looking forward to the tournaments coming up saying, okay, can Alabama get hot in the SEC conference tournament or maybe even into the big dance? Because if you don't play defense and there's a chance that your three-point shots aren't working, you can have all the tempo you want because, quite frankly, other teams love that. Hey, they can't make yeah. a shot, but yet we have the ball in our hands every 25 seconds to score, and we're getting fouled just by taking it to the rack. This is a bad sign here for Alabama hanging on to a top sure. 20 spot. Ultra talented in a tough conference, but you can't be given up. It seems like routinely, Ben, 100 plus points on a night to night basis. You can't win that way. They have gone over in eight of their last nine games, and these are not totals at 135 or 140. 176 yeah. and a half finds its way over. That is bad Alabama basketball. They rank 106th now in defensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm. They are the best offense in the country, but we have told you about the splits that you need to win a national championship. Alabama does not have that. No covers in their last four games as a dog. That sets the stage for a huge game tonight between Tennessee and South Carolina that could dictate who wins the SEC regular season crown. The Sunflower Showdown for the second time this year after K-State in the octagon of doom back in the little apple in early February knocked off Kansas. KU trying to return the favor last night at home in Lawrence. An 11 and a half point spread for Kansas in their favor and they made good on the number. A 22 point win, 90 to 68. The Jayhawks get the revenge. 
Yeah, this was a blowout, no doubt about it. I thought this game would get over the totals, less than the low 140s. It does crack over that because of 49 points in the second half by Kansas really helped that one. But just take a look at this. You know, making your free throw shots, Kansas State 10 of 21 from the free throw line, which is under 50%, which is terrible. But take a look at this for Kansas. This is what you love to see down the stretch. And if you're going to win close games, you got to do this. 28 of 31 from the charity stripe for 90% yep. as a team when they also shot close to 50% from three-point range. You're not going to lose many ball games, particularly at home in the fog. That's a big-time win for Kansas, who started to lose that steam as, hey, can this team actually make a national championship run? Look, Kansas State's not a great team. That was a good win for them in a perfect bounce-back spot. And yes, we did get over yeah. the total yesterday for our best bet. So good win all the way around out there in Kansas. Over 142 and a half. The Jayhawks entered last night dropping four of their previous seven games, including mm -hmm. that first game in February against K-State. They had not covered in any of the four defeats they covered last night. Kevin McCuller Jr. back for Kansas had 20 points in the road loss in Waco against Baylor, but a good performance, 19 points last night. K-State, one of the stories of last year's big dance, has now lost nine of their last 12 games mountain west watch in a very compact conference boise state and utah state entering last night tied atop the conference for that first place spot last night san diego state a loss against unlv the lobos or excuse me the running revs booked as a two and a half point home favorite total stays under boise state loses as a five and a half point home favorite to nevada by 10 craziness in the Mountain West, Utah State now sits in first. They're in action on this Wednesday evening. All of the excitement down the home stretch of this regular season in college basketball.